Oh. Good evening. Matt here. Paul Offshore Fishing. Uh, give it a little time to see if anybody's going to jump in. I uh, think I'm going to do a little rigging video for everybody tonight. Actually, I'm not thinking. That's, that's what I'm going to base this around. Still uh, not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. They're calling for rain. And we'll see what the weather looks like, whether or not we're going to put the boat overboard or not. And for some reason, my light over here is not... No, or I'm trying to reflect some light over. Um, lighting has never been real good in this room, so what I've got is a light that's projecting that way, and it's deflecting off because it leaves a heavy shadow behind me, and it blinds me if it's pointing directly at me. What uh, gonna do a little rigging video tonight? If uh, anybody gets on live here, um, and what I'm gonna do is what I call um, everybody. I'm sure everybody's familiar with a king rig. Um, and I was watching another video and came up with uh, what's called a Spanish mackerel live bait rig, and it's very similar primness. Uh, and I will say that the same rig and same hook size um, pulled in that big uh, barracuda and it was hooked up on that second barracuda. Now, the rig was fine when I brought the rig in, but uh, I think what it, it just didn't get hooked up. And one of the things was I was, had to clear my lines out. So when I came back after clearing my lines out, he was gone. So it could have been just slack, uh, slackness in the... Um, leaving him and not keeping the pressure on him um, is the reason why he let go of the bait the other day. So what we're going to do is get the, I've went ahead and got everything together and uh, what I'm using are number six bronze or gold treble hooks. Now these are just mustads. Uh, number six is they're the 3599s and I just got these from um I just got these from a place in Moorhead City called uh, Sportsman Wholesale, and they have some discounted tackle and rigging. They didn't necessarily have the gold, but they had close and bronze. And the reason why we want a bronze or a gold uh, hook is if you look at some of our live bait or the, the Menhaden, and across their back, they kind of have a gold or a brown hue or sheen. So what it, what we're attempt to do is to hide these bronze or gold, and you could get do gold, but they they didn't have gold. So I got bronze hooks on their back, and the the color does match up on these bronze treble hooks. They do match the back of the the menhaden. We also are using just a thirty pound swivel, and that's how we're going to attack attack our main line now for the actual rig itself construction we're using number 29 um wire which is like a third you know like a um excuse me 20 pound 29 pound test wire and uh i know a lot of people i've heard some people saying that the fish can bite through them um this last week and nobody bought you know nobody bit through this wire and uh, uh this poundage wire i've heard of you need to go with 44 or 60 pound wire in the fall um i will say that as long as this will keep catching and as hard as it is to see see i gotta get it right in front of the camera so you can see it um i'm gonna go with it now the other thing is this is probably about 14 to 15 inches i made one uh, one strand of wire and the other one is about eight and i went ahead and pre-cut everything to cut on time but what you're going to do is pretty much do like your conventional haywire twist now how i grab my hooks and how i try to tie them is you can see right here this hook is how it's a, it's attached here and then this hook is all uniform and what I try to do is hold it like that so this hook is going into the back and it's also the same hook that 
on the front on the front hook that this little barb here that's how you go through the lips and up through the nose of your midhane to help hold the mouth shut and it also helps and you see how it's holding it right there it, what it will do is help the rig kind of center itself on the nose so it it prevents your baits from spinning so to start this for the back we're going to flip it over where it's like this and we're going to come up and through and we're going to pull about three and a half inches three inches and kink it over like this and you you'll want to try to because it starts to do memory you want to try to get it to go past halfway and then what we're going to do is what a haywire twist and pull it to basically put your thumb there and twist this wire around and help with the hook. And it's gonna take a little, it takes practice because it just came undone right there. And it almost where you gotta get a couple started before it stays. And on this, uh, for the for Spanish mackerel, three twist seem to do pretty well. I got two. Of course, I did this the other night and whipped them right out, and now I'm on camera. I'm about to stick myself with the the hook. All right, you get three going, and then what I do is hold the twist with my pliers and kink that wire out like that 90 degrees, and I do my barrel wraps, and I go, I do my barrel wraps about five times, and what the pliers do is help me keep it tight. And because it's smaller wire, now they make tools for it, but because this wire, 29 power wire, is so small in diameter, those tools don't really, uh, I've not had good luck with those tools. And then you come around and you make a handle and you try to clip it off. And uh, finally got a, a viewer on, good evening, I don't know exactly who it is. But we're making Spanish live bait rigs tonight. I'm going to try to pin you down. And we're going to clip this tag in off. Now, a lot of people don't like clipping it with the pliers because you have a little burr right there. But these rigs are so going to be so small and short that our leaders go Because they're not your typical king rig where you got 20 inches of leader out there you're going to have probably about eight inches of leader for to the swivels that you're going to grab a hold of the uh, fluorocarbon and uh, you're not even going to touch this rig you're just going to clip it off through the fishing box <clears throat> all right now we got one hook and this is going to be our tag um, or our stinger hook so we're going to come back through and what we want to try to do is get this what's going to be our front hook I want to say about five inches or basically and I use my palm of my hand the base of my palm up to the basically the middle of my um, middle finger and for this and you kind of have to gauge it to the baits you're using but the baits I was using the other day that was a good length because I was tying a lot of these in the boat because I had a uh, I'd used up quite a few rigs, so I was using these, um, tying stuff out to try to match the bait, and sometimes that's what you got to do uh, to get your baits to uh, swim correctly, because if you got too much of a stinger on the back, your bait's going to spin or something's going to happen, or the fish might see that stinger hook. So we're going to get that twisted, started. Two, three, let's do one more for good measure, four, 
We're gonna bring that back and hold it with our pliers. Make sure my barrel wraps are going the right way and stick myself. And we're going to do our five barrel wraps. And for time when I was out there, like I said, we're not you're not going to handle the fish where these rigs are, at least I don't, that I just go ahead for time, clip them off with the pliers. If I can clip them off, there we go. All right, there we got our front hook and then our stinger hook. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and do our front line of our leader. What's going on, Mr. Wood? I hope you're doing well tonight. We're, uh, I'm tying up some live bait Spanish rigs. What I touched on a minute ago, because these rigs are so small, it's not, they're a little bit shorter than your conventional king rigs. Um, since this was going to be our front hook, we're trying to catch the barb right here where we're going to go through the lip. Now this stinger's going to fold back here when we do our haywire twist on our front leader we're going to come up and pull about three inches of tag out and then basically kink off the wire yeah um given what we're doing is a, a, a live bait spanish rig um the king rigs are typically a heavier pound wire and I know you can't see this because it's so small, but it's kind of a, a downsize. Typically you have about 20 inches of wire from the front hook to the swivel and most of your, um, your rigs. And we're gonna do it eight inches. And what we this is typically used on either a peanut pogey or a, uh, a smaller menhaden. Um, recap earlier, I'm using number six, bronze treble hooks and the reason why we're doing bronze over metal is the bronze is the same color as the back of the menhaden that you would catch to use as bait as live bait and what we're doing is going to just do a haywire twist and we've kinked this wire around and if i don't stick myself with these stinger hooks we're going to start our twist come on baby I need a third hand. All right, I got my thumb where I need it now. And we're just gonna twist them around and try to get these haywire started. And with a Spanish, on typically on a typical king rig, there I've seen people do five uh, haywires and then five barrels. But with these, you only need to do about three haywires, but I still do the five barrel swivels because that locks the hay wires in. And so we got our three. And now what I do with the barrels is I take my needle nose pliers to hold it on there because you want to try to get these down tight. And you kink your tag in over 90 degrees. And then you just wrap it around your main line of your wire. And I didn't, I don't know if I pointed out to you since you got on, but I'm using 29 pound wire and number six bronze must add treble hooks. Um, in the fall, people say that you need to use 40 and even 60 pound wire because you uh, a kingfish might hit them and they can cut through the 29 pound wire. Um, this last weekend, I was using this same and I pulled a couple of barracuda up to the boat and the rigs did did what they needed to do. And so now we got our lead hook and our stinger. And what we need to do is do a swivel. And I'm just using a 
30 pound American fishing wire swivel. And I got the supplies from uh, Sportsman Wholesale there on 24 in Moorhead. <clears throat> but most ta most of your tackle stores are going to hold this stuff. I'm using 30 pound swivel, number six Mustad treble hooks, and then 29 pound um, Malin single strand wire. On live bait rigs, some people use set, talk about using seven strand um, wire, which is kind of like a braid. But I, I've noticed that the single strand does it, as long as you don't kink it real bad, you can boat multiple fish, at least the fish that I catch or the smaller ones. But, uh, but yeah, what we're going to do next is tie this swivel on, and you want to try it. And we're going to make these rigs shorter because. The Spanish can get leader shy, and you want to do it about 18 inches, or excuse me, 18, 8 inches from the, uh, to the swivel to the, that fr front treble hook. And so, we're going to go ahead and crimp this down, and see if we can get it to go past it. And I'm going to get my thumbs set up. And you, we're going to do our three haywire twist. And we're going to kink that tag wire back a little bit, 90, a little bit past it. And we're going to grab a hold of the hay wires in the loop with our needle nose. And we're going to bring this barrel wrap down. And it didn't start like I wanted it to. Now, one of the things is that doing hay wire twist makes perfect, or uh, takes practice to make it perfect. Um, there are also some tools like they have little speed haywire twisters that you can get and I got one and the only, it doesn't work with the smaller wire. It works great with your bigger wire, but uh, the smaller wire, you can just about do everything with hand by hand and your needle nose pliers. And what I do instead of, you can twist it off and I think I did six loop barrel wraps instead of the five, but there you have it. If I can get it, the camera to focus, maybe I get out of the scene. I don't think that focused in too well. Now, you can work this back and forth and get it to clip off, but uh, because this rig is so small, I'm going to pull, when I grab a hold of it, I'm going to grab a hold up here where it's going to be either mono or fluorocarbon shock leader. And typically, I don't touch down here on the rig um, where I could get the burr. Because what if you clip this off with a set of pliers, you're going to have a little uh, burr from the wire sticking out that could cut you. Um, so keep that in mind. But these rigs are easy to tie. And for sake of time, I just go ahead and clip them off because I get impatient sometimes with these. And if it's got a, too much of a tag, what you can do is take your pliers and kind of kink that back down. Or use, sometimes you can use your thumbnail and kind of work it back down to get another wrap on it. But what you can do from here is I take, pretty much when I attach my main line to it, I use like a, a uni knot. Um, where, if you were going to do this in a shore application, if you had, um, a offshore breeze, so to speak, or if you're on a on a pier with a side breeze, you could get what's called a kite rig and take this same rig, take this, <clears throat> basically it's gonna be the same rig on your bait and you can attach it to the main line of a kite and use a set of floats and basically let the kite pull your uh, live bait out on it from the pier if you have the right wind direction. If you have an onshore breeze, around here that's not going to uh, work too well. I would say if you had a straight on for for let's say instance uh, Oceana Pier you could take a kite rod and a kite and hook it up one of these rigs and send it off if it was a west wind or an east wind you could go lateral of it but if you had a north wind you could set up at the end of the pier and send it off um, would be something you could do or you could do it from the beach because uh, 
the other thing is I'm not sure if you can really use a kite on that pier. It's going to be up to who uh, manages and runs the pier, but that's pretty much it on these uh, Spanish live bait rigs. Um, like I said, it's very similar to what you would consider a king rig. It's just on smaller tackle, lighter tackle on a smaller rig because those bigger Spanish tend to be leader shy. But uh, if you do get hooked up on a king, like I said, I think it'll bring a 25 pound king right onto the boat if you uh, keep the pressure on. So, but that was uh, the short and sweet for uh, tonight's thing. Uh, Mr. Kevin, I hope uh, you got any questions on it or uh, anything you want to ask tonight. Give you a time to type. I'll sure to, uh, as far as catching some nice pick, uh, nice fish and sending pics, you know, I, I try to post everything uh, I, I do, whether it's on video or uh, a little short, short uh, I mean, I, most of it's on video, whether I post it here on YouTube or put something on Instagram. Um, yeah, I, I, I try to be as uh, forthcoming with information um, when I can, when I got it, so, uh, but I, hey man, I do appreciate you getting on tonight and, uh, interacting with me, uh, I was thinking there's another gentleman that's around here, uh, around this area, uh, uh, Fish on Forte, I was hoping he'd get on, but I guess it's not going to be, because he's got, if you, if you want to know, uh, he, he, here lately, he's been the bottom, uh, fishing master for, local to me so to speak and he's getting ready to upgrade his boat to a rodan and he uh he's got a, a big offshore trolling motor he's getting ready to put on so but yeah check it out man um like i said last uh the video that dropped yesterday was uh I, probably uh I, i'm still getting working on <clears throat> my editing skills and getting cameras set up i do did notice that i was first time doing color correcting was this last video and as i got further into the video the color correcting got easier um but we'll go from there cool deal wait till uh august 16th is when you can keep them but uh right now july is considered uh when they do the jubilee what's called the uh the locals call the jubilee for uh the flounder jubilee and that's where the fish pretty much come, it gets so hot that the fish come up on the shore and you pretty much can take a dip net and scoop them up um, uh, as far as the flounder go here in the Noose River. So uh, it's been going on for a long time. It's just funny that the season opens up after what we call the Jubilee. So, uh, but yeah, next month through the end of September, hopefully we won't get a hurricane in here that's going to mess it all up. So... But uh, with that, man, I sure do appreciate you getting on, and we'll see. Uh, I've been trying to do this every night. Some, no, it didn't work out yesterday. Um, we'll see how tomorrow goes, because I got a birthday party. Uh, little boy has got a couple of birthday parties going on this weekend, so between grandmas and social distancing and cousins and whatnot, so um, whether or not how many times I'm going to get on this weekend, but uh, with that, also check out Monday. We uh, skinned out and cooked a shark this past week, and we're going to do the uh, kind of abbreviated cooking video that's going to come out on Monday. So if you could just, if you want to look at that, just go ahead on to YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, and you'll be able to see when we uh, try shark bites, shark nuggets here on Monday. With that, Everyone, I appreciate anybody that gets on after uh, we cut off the live stream tonight. And I hope you <clears throat> have a good one, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.